Well, we meet again. Today I'm assembling Impulse RC Apex Evo 5 inch FPV frame. No time to waste, so let's start. First, I'll install press nuts into each arm's end. I'm using M3 6mm cup head bolt and cone washer. I have to place a press nut into the hole at the end of each arm. And then pull it into the arm from the opposite side using the bolt and washer. This process will be identical for each arm. If correctly installed, the top of the press nuts should sit just below the surface of the arm. Don't force it. Keep pulling press nuts in very gently. Once you feel the shoulder of the press nut reach the ridge inside the arm, you should stop. The press nuts will become fully seated when securing the arms to the frame later during this assembly. Installing four press nuts into the upper main plate. Once again, we need M3 6mm cup head bolt and a cone washer. I need to place four press nuts on the outer holes. Make sure to do it on the opposite side of the plate to the countersinks. Same like last time, I need to pull the press nut into the plate using the bolt and washer. When fully installed, the shoulder of press nut should sit flush with the plate. Again, make sure you're installing these press nuts on the opposite side to the countersink holes. The following step is to install FC ESC stuck mounting bolts. We have an option to use the 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 mounting holes. Decide whether to use included M3 10mm, 16mm or 20mm countersink stuck mounting bolts. I won't need 10 and 16 mm ones. I'm going with 20 mm mounting bolts. Place the bolts into the selected countersink holes and secure them with included M3 nylock nut. Tighten the nylock nut sufficiently so that the bolt will not rotate when installing additional mounting hardware to secure or stuck. Note that once the frame is assembled, the heads of the stuck mounting bolts are not directly accessible. Step number 4 is to secure arms and key to the lower main plate. We'll use an M3. 8mm cap head bolt with thread locker and a cone washer. This is an 8mm cap head bolt with thread locker. We'll insert bolt with washer into one of the inner arm mounting holes. Attach arm to lower main plate using the embedded press nut. Do not fully tighten yet. You should be able to move arms a bit. Repeat process to attach three arms. Rotate two arms so they're correctly aligned and the tips are braced together. Rotate the third arm out of the side 
to create space to install the key. This is the key. Install the key and rotate third arm into position. Attach the fourth arm to secure the key in place. Again, do not fully tighten the bolts. The arms should still be able to wiggle. Step number five is to install shoulder bolts through lower main plate and arms. And for that, we're using an M3 cup head shoulder bolt with thread locker and a cone washer. Insert bolt with washer into one of the outer arm mounting holes. Repeat the process to install remaining three shoulder bolts. All eight are in place. Step number six. I'll install upper main plate over the arms and align the press nuts with the exposed threads of the shoulder bolts. Tighten each of the shoulder bolts one revolution at a time, working your way around in a star pattern until fully secured. installed in step 4, again working in a star pattern, until fully secured. Working from the outer to the inner bolts and following a star pattern will ensure all components are correctly seated and aligned. Looking solid. This frame is truly a piece of art. Temporarily install a VTX antenna mount, but later I'll replace it with my own 3D design for two antennas, Voxnel Avatar HD Pro V2. Next thing I want to do is install this amazing camera cage. self-explanatory really. These soft mounts can be installed two different ways. One if you want your FPV camera closer to the front of the quad and backwards in case you want your FPV camera deeper inside the cage. Front bumper is in. Truly, my precious. We will definitely need remaining standoffs. I will not install now. 
I'll do that when building my 7th custom 5 inch build in a couple of days. These are nice, motor wire protectors, but I won't use them. I have my signature move, which I'll show in a minute. This is a must, an HD video system isolation plate. Lipo strap looks nice, love the logo. But plastic buckle is a huge deal breaker. Skids look incredibly nice. But I'm planning to install my own creation, snap-on ones, which can accommodate cob lights. Two diamond foils, flat and round one, is a nice touch. Install top plate. I'm using 6mm button head bolts and 8mm where it applies. Included inside the package are two LiPo pads, rubber and Velcro one. Velcro one weighs 2 grams only, and the rubber one is around 7 grams. As I've mentioned a few moments ago, this is my signature move I use on all my custom builds. Custom motor wire sleeving. wires are thinner than in any of the other motors I've used. Meaning one thing. I can fit all three wires inside one sleeve. No need to use two or three sleeves per arm anymore. Securing the ends with electrical cloth tape. And I end up with nice and clean look. I always pay attention to keep the wires tidy inside the tube. And if you solder them in correct order, you will save yourself configuring motor rotation in bed of light. In most cases, each wire should connect to the nearest ESC motor pad. have to tuck these wires away for now. In few days, when I start putting my 7 custom quad together, I'll cut them to the exact length, so there is no extra weight added to this build. cookies little board. Weather outside is so ugly it's not allowing us to enjoy the field. Cookie, but next week is supposed to get nice outside. Look at my new drawer. Nice.
Meaning there will be some drone, soccer ball and frisbee action going on. Oh yeah, let's not forget this build is getting cobalt -like treatment as well. A cyan one. Thanks for watching.